The Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Thought provoking. Informative. Engaging. Are you ready to be inspired and equipped? And now, The Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Welcome to the comfort zone with Ray Comfort. <laughs> I asked myself, how many times have I said that? I thought, let's spice it up a little bit today. Well, go on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> no talent on display. Hey. Welcome to the comfort zone with Ray Comfort, friends. It's always a good day at the comfort zone when Jeff Cito is in the audience. Welcome, Jeffrey Cito, whose name rhymes with Nito. Aerospace engineer, co-author yeah. of Made in Heaven, husband to wife Diane, who Which works is the, the most board, important. Who does your makeup. Fact. Then. And, mm. and speaking of makeup, Mark Spence isn't here today. No. <laughs> Diane, how was it to only have to do makeup for about 30 seconds today? <laughs> <laughs> she usually does about 15 minutes on Mark. <laughs> Today's program is on wellness. Mark isn't here because he's sick. Yes. Um, but we need to pray I for mean, him. I don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, I think he's sick, he's sick of the program. He's sick of the program? Probably, <laughs> I would imagine, with all we do to the poor Guy. Do you know, uh, Ron opened in prayer today and we're very impressed with his eloquence. Well, everyone else was. I can pray better tomorrow. But it reminded me of, <laughs> reminded me of D.L. Moody. Uh, apparently once he said after a guy prayed, uh, thank you, sir. That was one of the most eloquent prayers I've ever heard prayed to a Boston oh, co congregation. Pain. Yeah. So, uh, Can't imagine that. Humility well, of friends, heart. yeah, stay humble. Yes, indeed. Friends, it's good <laughs> to have you with us, and it's good to have Brad Snow. Bradley, how art thou? I am doing Ooh, it's well. It's Charles Spurgeon. Do your Charles Spurgeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're building the beard out in the hair. We'll yeah, get we're him getting there the soon. cigar, too. I'd like to have a little Spurgeon. Oh, boy. You want to get us in trouble. <laughs> Brad with a cigar. All right, friends, there are some trending things going on in the news today. Of course, Israel is always somehow in the news. Jerusalem is that trembling cup to the nations. But boy, we got pop stars involved. Justin Timberlake under fire from Palestinian fans. Are they still Did called pop stars? Isn't it something hmm. from 1950? <laughs> pop stars. Are we behind the times in our lingo? Uh, pop stars, celebrities, something like that. Justin Timberlake under fire from Palestinian fans over Instagram <laughs> post. Oh, boy. Was he pushing over a wall or something? <laughs> <laughs> Holding the wall. it up. <laughs> Chicago Tribune. Pop star Justin Timberlake upset some Palestinian fans Wednesday after posting Oops. an Instagram photo of himself <laughs> praying Don't on the do Western that. Sorry, wall. I'll straighten my tie to come back to me. Oh, We're supposed boy. to be looking at the wailing wall or something. Oh, boy. All right, where was I here? Upset some Palestinian fans Wednesday after posting an Instagram photo of himself praying on the Western Wall in preparation for his performance in Tel Aviv. Timberlake wrote, what an experience. I will never forget this day, Israel. The photo garnered over 200,000 likes, but Palestinian fans were upset with his Israel hashtag. There was never an Israel. This was always Palestine, one Instagram fired back. And other commented, for your information, it's called Palestine. That there's no land called Israel. Be sure of that. It's Palestine and forever added another user. <laughs> Boy, things never seem to calm down over there. Huh, it's Ray? a hot spot. Mm. It is a hot spot. Hop, Easy. Hop spot. Yeah. Hop a hot spot for the pop. Hot uh, chap. Um, Easy, you from Lebanon. Right. I heard you talking about it the other day, speaking a little Lebanese. Why don't you just share a little bit about Lebanon and how it was a hot spot when you were a youth and, yeah. and how it's a beautiful country. The Bible speaks of the trees of Lebanon. The cedars of Lebanon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, I, my mom has recounted to me, or had recounted to me years ago, that when I was born, uh, she actually remembered looking outside the hospital room window and seeing the s streets completely cleared because a civil war had broken out. Right. That was back in 1975. And uh, from there, uh, war raged for, I think, about 18 years. 18 and, uh, years. And 18 years, nonstop, you know, just millions of lives lost uh, over those years. So what was the war? Over land? Uh, well, it was civil at first, you know, just between the Palestinians and the Lebanese. And then from there, it just broke out between the Christians and the Muslims. And then with Israel and Syria, and it just, it just nonstop. There seemed to be something know. wrong with human nature. I'm telling you. <laughs> it goes back to that Ishmael, yes. you know, <laughs> the problems there. Uh, but, you know, this is an issue. But, Brad, I want you to speak to this because it seems that with political correctness today, uh, you can't get away with anything. People have an issue over anything that's said. I don't know about that. That's wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. And we see it transferring over to how Christians are impacted as well. We don't want to get into the minutia of this. This is something that's been raging forever. But just a general principle of 
uh, just the whole political correctness, where even Christians now are being penalized for speaking their conscience in regard to their faith. Go. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I, I, one thing I thought that stood out to me is the power of hashtag. I mean, you put a hashtag in front of something and uh, you're going to offend somebody. I but, still have no idea what Brad, hashtag Brad, please tell means. me. I was going to say, I, I hear it all the time. <laughs> what is What's a hashtag? hashtag? I'm so, I feel dumb asking. Tell oh, us, Brad. Well, you're, you're the man. Through social media allows people to find a certain term and everybody who's talking about that term. So everybody puts a hashtag in front of a, a you know, a word or a phrase or something. What's so people, so people can it? group these concepts under that single word. That didn't help. What is a hashtag? <laughs> why is it called a hashtag? Because well, they, they, they actually put a hashtag in front of it. We don't know so what that is. It's a pound symbol. Oh, yeah. well, oh, why, sorry. Don't they, why don't they say yeah. pound symbol? <laughs> Stop us being well, confused. Like, we're really showing our age here on this oh, program, sorry. Ray. <laughs> a hashtag sounds like marijuana or something. Yeah, all the cool people it's a pound just pound sign. <laughs> I, got a, I got a hashtag here. All the cool people <laughs> just left the program. We don't know what hashtags are. Yeah. Go ahead, Brad. Well, sorry. And I, you know, it's interesting enough, he did not go back and try to change it to smooth it out. Uh, uh, the, you know, obviously there was a, a, a controversy over his choice of referring to the Holy Land as, as Israel. And, uh, you know, you do get that a lot, you know, with celebrities trying to smooth out their words so they're uh, more broadly accepted. Uh, and as Christians, we don't have that opportunity because we're uh, bound to the uh, truth of God. And it's not an option for us to try to smooth out the, the things that we know are true because God has revealed it to us through his word, through his spirit. And uh, so I think as Christians, we find ourselves in trouble a lot of times because of the fact that we uh, are submitted to the truth that is uh, uh, from God himself. Right. Yeah. Well, that was a good bit of minutiae there. <laughs> <laughs> Bagging on my minutia, choice of words, right? <laughs> What's minutia? Oh boy, can't get away with anything on this program. Yeah, friends, you know, look, here's the thing. As Christians, we have a choice uh, in this world. Either we're going to march to the beat of the world's drum, which sometimes, you know, will have consequences with it if you violate it, or we're going to stand up for the truth of the gospel. Now, I know a lot of times we talk a lot about a lot of different things on the program, but the heart of what we do as a ministry is to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission. So, are you going to stay silent about the truth of God's Word, or are you going to get up and proclaim the gospel? Justin Timberlake had a little bit of issue. People are getting all worked up about it, but he's saying, you know, that's what I said. I'm sticking with it. Yeah, that's good. What do you say, Ray? Why is he called Timberlake? That's what I don't know. It's <laughs> just a strange name. He lives in name. the woodlands on I the lake, don't know. Yeah, I think it's very cool. Yeah. So anyhow, friends, <laughs> stick with that and uh, let's proclaim the truth. And if you haven't connected with us yet, remember tczlive.com. You can join the chat room. We're going to be doing a giveaway today. So if you haven't logged in, do that. If you're in there and haven't connected through the chat room, make sure to do that. All right. We've got something delightful to show you. And as you watch it, remember, everything that happens in this video is impromptu. It's just a guy sitting with a guitar outside of a Kroger's. And then this happens.
this is the sort of thing you'd do. Look, it said jam oh. session here. I thought we were going to see some toast and butter and a little mm. bit of apricot. You know what, Ray? That video's got over 14 million butter. views on YouTube. Oh, you're so, no, that guy's sitting there with his guitar just doing his thing. The first guy walks up, starts singing. The other guy walks up, starts rapping. They're going on talk shows. They were on, I think, Jimmy Kimmel, and, and uh, they're doing a CD now. And, Huh. So we should do that, Ray. Get out there you with the yarmulke on the turban. Just walk oh. up on it. Lie, 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 lie. throw in some raps and rhymes. Jeff can beatbox. What do you think, Jeff? We can make it happen. We can get 14 views. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can get Brad out there as Spurgeon hanging out with us. Oh, big cigar. I think yeah. it would, it would, it would we'll try. That would be fun. But that was cool. You know, a little bit of impromptu. The things that happen in life. You are impromptu. You can't do it if you plan it. But if it's impromptu, you just I can't know. stop you. I'm going to have to bust some freestyle on here yeah. someday. We'll see. <laughs> All right, friends. <laughs> on to something encouraging. This is a Facebook post from Michael. I spoke to someone from Illinois yesterday. She said she wasn't a believer until she started to have questions, which led her to you on YouTube. From watching some of your videos, her and her family have now surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. They will be with us forever in heaven. Thanks, bro, for what you do. Press on. Wow. Mm. How encouraging is that? It just shows me the power of social media and the miracle of video. I mean, we just yeah. take it for granted that we can, whatever happens, send out pictures <laughs> of human beings that aren't really there, but it conveys yeah. the message of the gospel. It's just wonderful. I'm sad that DVDs are going now. I, I, <clears throat> I, I went five miles on my bike yesterday. Five miles Get on out. my new bike. Yeah. Seriously? And <laughs> what happens is when I see a stranger, when I'm riding along the path of, by the canal, I throw a DVD at them. <laughs> <laughs> Lawsuits! And, 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 Coming. Well, it reminded me, I did hit a lady in the head in Santa Monica with a candy bar that was that big. She got an answer to a trivia, I went, you know, clunk on her head, I thought I better stop that. But yeah, uh, I haven't hit anyone yet, and people stop and pick them up. I say, hey, check yeah. this, and toss them at them. I said, um, but I've learned something about uh, modern society. You can yell your head off till you're blue in the face when you're coming 20 miles down your bike at a guy who's on the path and he doesn't move because he's got his little earplugs oh, right. in. Everyone knows. And he's grooving and he's got his back to you. <laughs> and if he steps to the left, you're both dead almost. Right. Mm. And you cannot alert him. You're coming. I think how many people running on the road get killed because they can't hear cars coming. Yeah. I heard another lady recently just, she was out running, run by a car. No doubt she had the little plugs in. It's crazy. It, it you should crazy. wear the Google glass and show us your adventures oh. on the oh, bike. That would <laughs> That'd be, be something to be old. Oh, yeah, I love, love to do that. that. It's, uh, uh, I don't think you guys keep up with the speed. Uh, you're right. A lot, just, of, a lot of pixelating. <laughs> well, Michael, thank you for writing in about mm. that. And again, that reminds us, I was looking at our YouTube channel yesterday and again, blown away that we have 96,000 subscribers, which makes it by Alan's accounts, the largest Christian ministry YouTube channel. There's some Christian music channels and stuff, but as far as like a Christian ministry, it's the largest channel in the world with, I think we're over 27 million views, or almost at 27 million views. We have got to have some sort of celebration when it hits 100,000. Oh, I know, I'm like excited. A cigar or something. You remember yeah. the first video? Uh, the, the very first one we did? Mm, the very first video on our YouTube channel. Do I know what it was? Yeah. No, I don't remember. <laughs> Do you, Brad? Yeah, it's uh, Kirk uh, witnessing to the gang members. Oh, no is way. That yeah. Well, that's got like that 700,000 yeah, views. 730,000. That's exciting. So, yeah, friends, so make sure to subscribe if you've never done it, right? I think there's a button up there and one down there if you're but, on the you computer. Know, you've got to remember, people who don't know what a hashtag is, you say subscribe to them, and they think, what, am I going to start getting junk right, mail? Right. No, you won't. It doesn't cost anything. And we, we will alert you or something when you when a new video comes out yeah. if you're subscribed. Right. What happens is it's, I think, connected to your Google account or something. And then you get an automatic email when new videos go up. So you're, you're kept up to date. I think you can set, do the settings how often you want to be notified. But it keeps you in the loop. What's that noise? Loop. <laughs> <laughs> in the loop. So anyway, yeah, go to livingwaters.com. And it just says subscribe. Click on it. and uh, Yeah. yeah or uh, youtube.com forward slash the way of the mass. Master. That's our channel, and you Whatever. can subscribe. On the there. Something like that. Whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, friends, it is time for the Cage Match Memory Mayhem. Where do you come up with these names, Alan? And here's what we're giving away today Made in Heaven in honor of Jeff Cito's beloved presence. This is a book he co authored with Ray. So get your typing fingers ready. And here's the question. Remember, for those of you watching on YouTube, this isn't for you. It's for those watching live at tczlive.com and are logged into the channel. And chat. Jeff's going to sign that, too. Which Jeff it's will a, sign it. So you get a, a signed copy, book. and you'll sign it, too, right? Google search ready. Okay. So here we go, friends. Who killed a thousand Philistines <laughs> with a donkey's <laughs> jaw? <laughs> oh, 
Alan. Oh boy, this is Alan, great. I thank God for the day. I you think people, this people are so distracted by that. Yeah, I haven't read the question <laughs> yet. So, easy, when you were a baby, why did you have such big lips? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where's they have been fixed since about the time. <laughs> Okay, okay, so again, who go killed... Go back to that. I'd rather see that's it. <laughs> Look at those teeth. What a great invention oh, that was. Boy. What a brilliant thing to do. All right, friends. So get your answer in. The first person to answer <laughs> will win, and we will ship that out to you as well. What was the question? I don't know. <laughs> who killed a thousand Philistines with, with his teeth? A uh, jawbone of a donkey. <laughs> All right, now, something for you to check out. Let's roll it. We live in the age of information. Every day, new devices are invented to help us communicate with each other in easier and faster ways. But in spite of all the social networking and all the electronic gadgetry, there's one non-electric method of communication that remains consistent as a highly effective way to communicate the gospel quickly and painlessly. Behold, the gospel track. The gospel tracks come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are funny, some are serious. And they range from short and sweet to much more in-depth. And every good track contains two elements, the law and the gospel. Now the law needs to be in a track in order for the reader to understand why they need a savior, right? Because they've broken God's law. And the gospel needs to be in the track because, well, that's the whole point of a gospel track. The Gospel. This is our Curved Illusion Gospel track. You can go up to a complete stranger and say, I've got something to show you. Which looks bigger, the blue or the red? And they say, obviously, the blue looks bigger. And you swap them over, and the red becomes bigger. It's not magic, it's an optical illusion. It really is amazing. People love it. You say, hey, make sure you read the message on the back. It's just another creative way to share the Gospel. <laughs> And to the victor goes the spoils. <laughs> yeah! The winner is Etsy Sula. I don't know if I said yeah! it right. Yeah! Oh, speech! Speech! Yeah. So, uh, Etsy Sula, <laughs> if you would email us at email at tcclive.com, your mail address, we will get that in the mail for you. Wonderful. That is actually our dear sister. Nia, who uh, is the one going to the Monkees concert to preach the gospel. So please remember to pray for her as she does it, that the Lord would use her mightily. All right. The fun is over. Now on to some questions. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, being that Jesus was 100% man on earth, could he of sinned if could he, he chose to? Could he of sin? Could he of? <laughs> could he of sin? Could he have sinned? This is from Syria. Email from Syria. Brad Snow, what do you think? Well, no. Thank you. Definitely not. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think a lot of times we look at the, uh, the temptation of the wilderness and we think, well, if somebody's tempted, that means they have the possibility to, uh, the ability to sin. And I think uh, it's our misunderstanding of the word tempted or tempting in this case, but it's not uh, tempted as in to entice his desire uh, to do uh, what would violate the law. Uh, it's a testing or proving uh, is the usage. And so in that case, it's not uh, evidence of the fact that Jesus would be able to stand. In fact, you know, in fact, he's fully God and fully man. He still has his uh, divine attributes and of which it would be include not uh, the ability to sin. Right. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing is, is that there are some Ray who would say that Jesus did sin. Uh, and When he cleared the temple? That's there often they say Well, that. yeah, and they'll try to s cite you know, human potential, and there's no way that he couldn't have, and it's just a denial of scripture. Yeah. But it's so important, friends, with things like this that we stick with the word of God. And so, Ray, that brings up the question. People will say, well, okay, Jesus was God, and that's kind of where this finds its root. Mm -hmm. Can God not do something? If he's omnipotent, if he's all-powerful, if he's the creator of the universe, well, then he should be able to do anything. And then they try to pin you with, you know, can God make a rock so yeah. big that he can't lift it? So how do you answer that? When you're up on the box and someone challenges you with that, well, can God make a rock so big you can't pick it up? I usually say yes and no. <laughs> yes and no? Yeah, with God all things are possible. So he can do it and he can't do it, whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever. Right. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, he was without sin. Um, would Jesus have grown old, do you think? If he had lived to be an old, old man? Ah, boy, that's a good question. Yeah, I think he would have continued 
through with the aging process. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that people don't realize when, when it comes to what's called the hypostatic union of, of God becoming man, uh, it's not that God somehow, you know, commingled two natures, but, but the God of eternity, who's been God from all time or before all time, took upon himself human nature. And so sometimes what people do is that they'll, they'll confuse the two and they'll mix them up. They'll focus too much on the divinity of Christ and not on his humanity. Right. But he was human in every sense of the word except the sinful nature. And so, yeah, Jesus, you know, he would have, uh, you know, gotten tired. He would have uh, slept. He would have eaten. He, he, he you know, he would have uh, cried and all those things because he fully had upon himself human nature. But then people will discount the divine that he was God, and so they'll say, well, of course, right. if he was a human being, then he must have been able to sin. But you know, we know different. I love hypostatic unionism. It's just, <laughs> it sounds just like some kind of religion. Wonderful. You know, when someone says to me, ah, oh, Jesus sinned when he cleared the temple, I say, you, you, you said you got upset because he got rid of the televangelists. Because right. that was happening, the money grabbers. He just says, out of here, and I just love that. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, there's, certain, there's certain things I call uh, goosebump scriptures, where Jesus said, I am. Uh, before Abraham was, I am. I love oh, him clearing yeah. the temple. Actually, the whole of the Gospels are uh, goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to sec segregate one section. But Brad, you know, I want you to speak to this too because a lot of times people will kind of create Jesus in their own image. We often talk about idolatry and creating God in our own image, but specifically that Christ, the second person of the triune Godhead, people will kind of uh, make him out to fit, I think, their perception of what he should have been like. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the incident of clearing the temple is one that people won't often go to. Or, or some of the other things that Jesus said to some of the, the religious leaders of his time speak to that. And, and why was that not sinful when Jesus spoke in ways that shocked people? He wasn't the you know, innocent Christ with the little lamb around his shoulders. Well, he came with authority. And with that authority comes uh, the ability to enforce what is right. And, uh, you know, Jesus uh, wouldn't have uh, been uh, in sin to clear out the temple because uh, what they were doing was a, 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 um, an offense to God. And, and uh, Jesus was uh, one who was just as, uh, you know, as well as loving and forgiving, he is also just. And it's oftentimes we like to create a Jesus that uh, emulates the things that we want to do so that we give ourselves the permission to live in the way that, that uh, doesn't come with consequence. And it allows us to uh, live uh, without uh, concern that we would offend God or uh, receive justice for the way we, we choose to live. But if we look to the God who is nothing like us and who demonstrates uh, his, uh, his justness as, uh, as well as his mercy, then we find ourselves uh, needing to submit to him and his will and his truth, and uh, which comes with a need to repent of our sin and to, to depend on his uh, mercy that he demonstrated uh, and fulfilled on the cross so that we can be forgiven of those sins and, and become something new, uh, given a new nature with a new heart and desire and become more like uh, God in his mind and on these things. You know, the Jesus of the New Testament is nothing like the world perceives him when you look at his coming in flaming fire and, you know, woe unto you and all, all the woes. Um, that's why we jump from what did Jesus do or what would Jesus do to what did Jesus right, do? Right, yeah. You know, we, uh, what would, the world even loves the, the WWJD. What would Jesus drive? What would Jesus do? Blah, blah, <laughs> blah. But we, we got onto what did Jesus do and confined ourselves to the safety of Scripture when right. it came to evangelism. Yeah. Because uh, you can think, well, oh, Jesus, what would he do? He wouldn't encroach on a woman's free choice. Wow, you that's know? so true. Yeah, you, you start wading into the hypotheticals. And then you begin to draw on emotions and human sentiment. And you've always got to be careful of that, friends. Uh, you know, Ray, I mean, we, we talked about this a little bit on the show yesterday, but I think it's things like this that contribute to the modern gospel. Jesus would never do this. Right. And you, how many times have you gotten that on the box? Jesus would never talk we to have people it like on. <laughs> we had that on Saturday. <laughs> Jesus wouldn't do this. I said, what Boy. Jesus are you talking about? He did do it. You uh, know? I know. I mean, you almost wish, you know, you had some kind of modern technology where you could display it real big and, and show them <laughs> the text. and blow up the person. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> modern technology and person, Jesus wouldn't do this. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Next. Right. So anyways, that, <laughs> Next. it's important. It's important to remember that, friends. Stick with Scripture. Uh -huh. And um, yeah. So anyhow, here's one more question. 
an unspoken prayer request, or unspoken queer. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good word. That's not good. Okay, this is an email from Tim. Are unspoken prayer requests biblical? My preacher at the church I was going to asked for unspoken at one of the services, and it didn't sit well with me for some reason. I looked around trying to find anything biblical to back it up, but I've failed so far. Can you guys help me find the answer? If this is unbiblical, should I point this out to him? Mm, I'd like to give that an unspoken answer. <laughs> <laughs> an unspoken answer. For unspoken, unspoken prayer, prayer request. request. It's kind of that's, weird. That's just telling people, hey, I can't tell you what's going on, but just pray for me, the Lord knows. Oh, is that what they're talking about? Yeah. You, come to, you, you get on your knees and just... <laughs> unspoken <laughs> prayer. Oh, I No, but you know, yes. when someone doesn't want to get into the details. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be, I think it's legitimate, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't see any problem with that. Um, you know, the bottom line is that God does know, and as you hold that person before the Lord and, and, and the Lord knows the situation, just ask Him to move in their lives and to help them in the midst of it. Whoever they and, are. Um, yeah, Brad, what do you think of that? Well, I sure hope it's not a sin because I did it recently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was in the middle of our shepherd group, our small group, and I had a request. That I couldn't give the details. And what were they, Brad? Uh, well, <laughs> 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 listen in, folks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, and. And uh, you know, I wanted prayer for this, but I really uh, was bound to not be able to give the details. Oh, it's those warts. Yeah. <laughs> no longer. Unspoken warts. Well, friends, uh, look, I'm so excited. I'm looking in the chat room right now. We got people from uh, New Zealand, people Whoa. from Massachusetts, Romania, New York, Missouri, West Virginia, Wisconsin, or all watching live, and that's encouraging. So again, if you've never connected with us live, you can do that Monday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, tczlive.com. You can jump into the chat room and be a part of the community. And always remember, you can connect with us through Facebook. Look us up by name, Emil Wayne. Mark Spence, Ray Comfort, Brad Snow, and whoever else you'd like. Harass Alan Atsby. Look yes. him up too. Oh, yes. All right, friends. And uh, also remember to subscribe to the channel. 96,000 people. Help us to get to 100,000 and spread the word. And most importantly, remember, we brought you into our comfort zone to get you out of your comfort zone. So get out there and proclaim the gospel under the glory of God. For questions about the comfort zone with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email us at email at tczlive.com. That's email at tczlive.com. The Comfort Zone is an outreach of living waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.